Well, welcome to the February issue of PRS. They say there's no cure for the common cold. And as you can tell from my voice, that saying is more true than not. But despite my own limitations, most of us in medicine, especially in plastic surgery, are constantly exploring how to get better and do better things to treat our patients and arrive at functional, efficacious, and aesthetic outcomes. Today we're going to talk about technological innovations, how they have permeated our meetings, our entire field, and more importantly, our journal. In the February issue of PRS, we're going to take a close look at three innovative technologies and techniques that are helping to shape the future and reshape the present of plastic surgery. Joining us today is Dr. Sam Lin, who you may recognize from our popular Tech Talk series at the ASPS meeting. Thanks so much for chatting with us today, Sam. Thank you. My pleasure, Rod. First, we're going to look at absorbable mesh as an alternative to acellular dermal matrices. In this interesting article, the authors provide one of the first studies on using absorbable mesh as an inferior lateral sling for implant-based breast reconstruction. Sam, tell us what you think about absorbable mesh. Does it provide the cost savings and complication reduction that the authors had predicted? Yes, absorbable mesh is micro mesh and in this study the authors used micro mesh as an inferior lateral sling to surround the implant during implant based breast reconstruction. The vital mesh is relatively inexpensive at only $200 per mesh, which is significantly less than the ADM products that we use on a daily and weekly basis. Interestingly, there was a 0% seroma and hematoma rate that was found in this study. And essentially what happens is the vital mesh is absorbed over time, being replaced by a capsule during the healing process. It's potentially an ideal solution for situations where there is a thick, relatively thick mastectomy skin flaps that's seen in these patients. And over time, I believe that will be potentially other materials that emerge in terms of being absorbable with respect to mesh. Thank you. Next, let's look at a new use for an existing technology, Erich arch bars, which are used frequently for reduction and stabilization of mandible fractures. In this interesting paper, the authors identify and challenge the existing perception that arch bars should not be used in children. They aim to fill a void in the literature and provide some of the first objective data investigating the use of conventional arch bars in pediatric patients for primary and mixed dentation. What did the authors do to challenge the existing protocols? The authors use arch bars in pediatric patients with primary and mixed dentition. In this group, 48 fractures or 23 patients were reviewed. 13 patients were without adverse outcomes. The authors are essentially expanding indications for arch bar use in the pediatric population, and they found no adverse outcomes related to comparing a group of patients over a 10-year period of time without arch bar use. I think this is an opportunity for a new design or improved design with respect to arch bars as the indications for arch bar use in pediatrics and pediatric patients may increase in the future. Very interesting. Finally, we turn to an article by Sam himself and his co-authors that explores one of the hottest new technologies in plastic surgery, 3D printing. They acknowledge that this technology is still in its early phases of evolution. But in this special topic article, Sam's group shows that the possibilities are vast and very exciting for all of us. How did you and your team explore this new technology? 3D printing has been in use in many fields for a number of years. Only recently has 3D printing made an entry into the medical field. Over the last year, we have been exploring options for 3D printing with respect to surgical planning and use in the operating room. 3D printing has the potential for providing customized implants tailored to the patient. It also may decrease lead time for implant construction. In the future, 3D printed implants may be available for patients for the head and neck, the extremities, and also the breasts. To discover even more new tools and technology, 
Please read the exciting February issue of PRS. Our authors explore hyperbaric oxygen therapy, scar-reducing devices, pre-designed breast shaping, and so much more. 2014 is going to be so innovative. Our field is constantly evolving with technologies from absorbable mesh to 3D printing that are being explored every day by our innovative colleagues all around the world. We are truly witnessing the evolution toward the future of plastic surgery within the White Journal. Perhaps soon enough, there will be a technological breakthrough on the common cold.